the two most exciting studies for breast cancer in general was probably number one is our expander study. You know, I, I'm sure everybody's talking about it. Um, this was a study that we were trying to um, study like 5,000 different women, uh, ER positive breast cancer in early stage lymph node one to three positive, where traditionally we would give the chemotherapy in the adjuvant setting as a standard care. And then using this 5,000 patients, it randomized into two different arms, either to receive uh, endocrine therapy alone or chemotherapy followed by endocrine therapy, stratify them based on a um, few of the clinical factors, you know, such as their like premenopausal stage, number of the lymph node. If they have a recurrent score, um, you know, measured from the tumor, le uh, less or the same as a 25. So with that, actually, you know, the very first initial primary endpoint was the interaction between the, the chemotherapy benefit and then the recurrent score. And then, of course, it's one of those studies that the interaction is really hard to prove. However, there was a very clear notion that there was no clear interaction between the higher score being a more beneficial from the chemotherapy. So they, the authors dropped that and simply measure the prognostic score, a prognostic value, and then the invasive distant, you know, disease-free survival, which showed a clearly in the postmenopausal women, actually by giving them additional chemotherapy in addition to endocrine therapy, the benefit was like very small, like 1.4% which is clinically very meaningless, you know, so for us. So meaning there was, was a prognostic value of the chemotherapy. However, that, you know, absolute benefit was a too small for us to meaningfully apply it in the clinical settings. So in the postmenopausal woman who's 25 or recurrent score or less, clearly there was really clinically meaningful chemotherapy benefit. So we can forego chemotherapy. However, in the premenopausal woman, I think the, the um, school of thoughts were two. Some people were surprised, myself weren't really surprised that there was actually clinical uh, clear benefit by introducing the chemotherapy by improving their in, you know the distant recurrence you know um, survivor rate. So you know for those patients, there's a still remaining question. The chemotherapy is still benefiting. You know, if so, what's the best chemotherapy regimen? Because some of those patients receive TC versus ACT as a full benefit chemo. Some people argue there is a still, you know, probably the result from the ovarian suppression. So there's a still a little bit of debate remaining in the premenopausal woman by the study, but in postmenopausal women, um, it's that, you know, we're probably likely to forego chemotherapy, which is practice changing.